coming at you from the Northlands Agricom. It's an in motion special with the 2009 Edmonton Motor Show. I'm your host, Zan Shi. Over the past few years, it's become tradition for me to attend the show with my friend Jordan, and this year was no exception. Last year, we brought along our friend Stuart, and this year, I brought along Paige, who had never been to a show before. Despite the fact that you're hearing this on the weekend, this was actually recorded on February 26th, which means it was Caitlin's birthday. And because of that, I'm dedicating this episode of In Motion to Caitlin. Happy birthday! Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got drunk. Really drunk. On to the show. North End's Agricom is under a bit of renovations this year, but it didn't impede on space too much. Uh, people entering the show were taken around the long way, which served not only to give you a glimpse of what you're about to see, but it also helped alleviate all the crowds that always formed near Hall A and the entrance exit. So as soon as you finished your little impromptu tour and officially entered the show, the first hall was Hall E, which contained uh, GM, Chevy, Saab Saturn, Cadillac, BMW, and Mini Cooper. And of course that means I didn't spend a whole lot of time there. I don't hate domestic models as a general rule, I just would never buy one myself. And that's saying nothing about muscle cars either. Hall C held Ford, Toyota, Nissan, Lincoln, Hummer, Mazda, and Kia. The main event of this haul was Nissan's GTR 35 and the 370Z. The GTR was cordoned off so no touching, pictures only, but the 370Z had no such restraint. Which means I got to sit in it. It's a very nice car. I want to buy one. But personally, I prefer how the 350 looks better, for some reason. I don't know. It's me. Hummer had some odd models this year that looked like a cross between their standard Hummer model and the Honda Ridgeline. Kinda creepy. Kinda weird. Surprised they're not out of the business by now. Mazda apparently has kept up production of the MX-5 Miata models, showcasing a 2009 version instead of their RX-8, which I would have thought would have been their main model. Placed predictably between Hall C and Hall A was Hall B, surprise, which included Volkswagen, Hyundai, Chrysler, Land Rover, Jaguar, Subaru, and Mitsubishi. Now Chrysler had almost half of the hall to themselves, squashing Jaguar and Land Rover into a tiny little corner and pretty much allowing them the space for one car each. Sucks to be them. Uh, Mitsubishi's main event was less about the Evo 10 and more along the lines of pseudo race girls. Which is nice, good move on their part. They had a lot of people milling about. Uh, part of that campaign was, you know, Mitsu take your pick. Hall A, the last of the above ground halls, had Volvo, Acura, Audi, Lexus, Mercedes-Benz, Aston Martin, Infiniti, and Honda. The Benz driving school once again made an appearance. Now assuming you know your alphabet, you may have noticed that we skipped Hall D. Well, Hall D is actually the underground hall, which was part of what you pass by on the entrance. And it usually holds a variety of companies and people who are, that are car-related, but not specifically dealer-related. Things like performance mods, RIMs, drift groups, RCMP, EPS, post-secondary programs, custom builds, all that jazz. Now, recruitment was still there for the police, but the drifters were pushed off to the far corner and given little space. And they had a model that looked like a GTR 32, but it was four-door instead of two-door. I was very confused. And so was Jordan. Uh, Blue Sky Limos was there, and they actually took up a lot of space. More space than you'd theoretically need for two stretch limos. Nice stretch limos, mind you, entering the free draw. But more space than they needed. And, of course, there was the standard American muscle car packages and a couple other minor things. It wasn't as good. The show was enjoyable, but felt a little lackluster, both myself and Jordan. Last year was pretty hard to top, though, with the introduction of both the Evolution 10 into Canada, about time, and the unveiling of the Nissan's GTR 35, both being very, very big news of the time. Perhaps next year's show will be more along the lines of what it used to be, since they won't have such massive, massive accomplishments to top. Unfortunately, next week's episode will be delayed, since I'll be out of town and collaborating on another project with Stu Man Cool. You heard his voice in the Xbox Live special. Things should be back on track after I return. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or suggestions, then you can send them to inmotionvc at gmail.com. That's I-N-M-O-T-I-O-N-V-C at gmail.com. I realize this is different from the last address I gave you in the last video cast, and that's because I figured that no one would have taken the first one, but I didn't actually check until after I uploaded the damn thing. Sorry. Thank you for watching this special edition of In Motion, featuring the 2009 Edmonton Motor Show. This has been, as always, your indomitable host, Sanchi, signing off.